of all the journals that comes on their indexes in different databases. And here you will have a list of these databases. Whenever you will see what journals are being indexed currently in Web of Science, you have to look up for Web of Science information and then you simply click on the appropriate link. And then you can sell journals or view journal list when you have a question whether a specific journal is being indexed by Professor Reuters in any of our databases or especially in Web of Science, you can search for the journal in Web of Science or you can simply type a word from its name in here, that would be biology, and you have a list of journals that contain the search, the search keyword. And at every journal, you have a link under, in, say, coverage. So if you click on it, a list will expand, <coughs> and you see in what databases this particular journal is being indexed. So if there are three of the databases namely Science Citation Index Expanded, Social Sciences Citation Index, or Arts and Humanities Citation Index, that means that this journal is indexed in Web of Science, and the citation information is available for that particular journal. Why this is important? Because in Master Journalist, we have over 16,000 journals. In Web of Science, we have <coughs> our biggest database, we index over 11,000 journals. And we are asked how many journals have impact factor. So those with impact factor would be over 9,000 journals. But I'll get to that. And this is uh, important from the perspective of uh, evaluation sometimes which journals have what impact factors, but we'll get to it later on. Are there any questions on master journals? Well, I've been uh, actually asked this week a question about master journals. Is it the same list of the journals that we have in World Science? Well, I said yes, of course, but just bear in mind that Web of Science is the main source, so when we start to index a journal at the Web of Science, it is actually first being indexed, and then we put the information on master journalist. So, bear in mind there could be a slight delay, because the Web of Science database is the priority, and this is just the information page. So, let's say there's a weak difference between the journal appearing here or at Web of Science. So let's go back to Web of Knowledge platform. We have two tabs available. As a default, you will see Web of Science platform here and you will be able to search. In additional resources, you will have access to many additional resources, but mainly we will be talking today about journal citation reports. And before we start, I kindly recommend to create your personal profile on the platform by signing in with this link or the link on the right side here, sign in or register, to get access to additional features. What these additional features are? Well, first of all, if you create your own account here, then you will be able to use Web of Science outside the university without having to have remote access. And whenever you feel like working with Web of Science, you'll be able to do so using your login details from here. 
So I have already my user account. And once I logged in, I see here a site that I want to sign in. What are the other features that now are enabled once I'm signed in? I can also use citation alerts, with, which I show you uh, later on during the course of our presentation. And I can use, say, searches features. At the same time, while I created my account and web of knowledge, I have access to reference management tool, which is MNOVA, and also my personal profile at Research ID is being just created. And we'll also get to that on the course of our presentation. But let us start first with a search, and what can we search, and how can we manage the search results. We have three search boxes here, where we can type our keywords, author names, publication names, etc. There are three default visible by default, but we can add another fields so our search can be more accurate. We can search up to 50 keywords at a time, but if that is not enough, then we can combine different searches and then the number of keywords is simply unlimited. What can we search through? There are different fields that we can use for search. And as we can search author names, which is quite self-explanatory, or we can search for keywords through title, we can also search through the topic. If we click for the search of a topic, we will be simply searching for keywords that are contained in the title of the publication, in the abstract of the publication, or in the keywords of a given publication. Publication name, DOI number, researcher ID, we will get to it, publication year, and two fields I want just to mark here is the address field actually. and here when we search for the address and we put for example uh, Latvia or Riga please bear in mind that the address field contains of different subfields so if you put Riga for example you can search for anything that contains Riga in the name of an institution in the street name or the city. So if you type Riga in the address, it can be any record that would contain, for example, Riga University of Technology. It can be a record from Institute X in Riga or University of Latvia in Riga, but can also be, for example, um, a institute in Germany at Riga Strasse. So just bear that in mind that you know what you are searching for. Let's scroll down and here we'll see information that would help us get the right results. We can limit the search to a given range of years and we can limit the search to given citation index. But given the above, I would rather not do that if you're searching for information. I would rather then use the filters as I'll be showing you in a moment because we want in the beginning to get as much information as possible and then it's better to narrow them down rather than risking of losing some search results in the beginning. We can adjust our search settings by turning on or turning off lemmatization. 
What is normalization? It is simply a tool that would help us not bother, let's say, with an English language. Uh, when we search normally for any database, and we search, for example, for mice, we would find all the records that contain this particular word, mice. Lemmatization expands the search by also plural version of the nouns. So when we search for room, we'll have rooms also found. When we search for mice, we'll also have, uh, when we search for mouse, we'll also search for mice. When we search for horse, we'll also get horses in the results. So we get a broader uh, overview of what's being written on a given subject. The same applies to adjectives, big, bigger, biggest, or also for the verbs. So we don't have to remember all the verb, all the forms of the English verbs in different forms, but we just simply type one and with lemmatization on it is going to be uh, searched. So that for explanation of lemmatization. We can at the time turn it off if we just want to find the exact words that we search for. And the last on this page, remember, <coughs> is a tool with, which help us to set up the way the results are presented on the next page. So we can set to display between 10 and 50 results. We can turn the panel, the refined panel on or off and we'll get to it in the morning. And we can set the way the results are sorted on the next page. So let's start with our first stage. Any particular ideas or needs? So we can do the example straight away. Asthma. Asthma. Is that related? Okay. So search for asthma in the topic. And we have over 60,000 results. And what can we do with them now? Of course, if we're searching for a given topic, then we might get too many results, and if we are researching a particular field, then it might be simply too many to, to choose. And usually when we're working on something, it's rather more narrow than this broad perspective. So we might want to choose which category this, uh, our search relates to. So it can be anything from immunology, pediatrics, or we can choose the more options, click on it, and we'll have the 100 most popular categories where the word asthma is being used. So let's click anything from her that you see. So let's just choose um, toxicology for no particular reason. We've chosen toxicology and now we have less results and this is actually the number that we can start working with. And then we can assume that we are only interested in original articles. Reviews or proceedings papers are not interesting to us. So we can just refine the results. And we'll see the results presented here from the newest to the oldest publications out of 910 results. We can decide to present our results in that different way. For example, we might want to know which are the most influential
influential papers in toxicology on asthma, which basically would show us what are the most cited papers in that area. And we see how they sold them. It's a paper from 2001. We don't have to go into the record view. We can click on the show abstract link and the abstract will appear here. We can also see from here how many times this particular paper is being cited. But we might have more questions about this particular discipline. So we would want to analyze all the results. So then if we go to analyze tool by clicking analyze results link here or by clicking this analyze results button under the refine panel, we would simply get a clearer version of this refine panel. So let's do that. And we have a number of categories that we can search through or analyze. So let's analyze the authors now in toxicology writing on asthma. So what do we get now is a list of names of authors that are the most prolific in that particular field. So we might, for example, search for more papers by this particular author knowing that in the ten past 10 years they have published 20 papers on this particular topic. We might want to, in this way, get the answer who, for example, would like to invite for a conference who is basically researching that particular skill. Well, we might always be interested from what countries most of the authors usually coming from. Or, what are the funding agencies usually involved in the research on that particular area. So that would be important for us. For example, if we are planning to do research in a particular field and we want to find out where should we go and ask for funding. We'll be interested, of course, what institutions are usually busy with that kind of research. And Least, last but not least, when usually research on that particular topic is being published. So this is a very useful tool that in this particular example can help us to choose particular journals where we want to publish our paper. So let's do, let's uh, follow this particular example that we are working uh, in, we uh, specializing in toxicology and now we are researching asthma. Uh, we know we have obtained the funding, we are working on um, our research and we are just wondering where we will publish our paper. So we have a couple of uh, titles here where we can try to publish our paper, but we can also use journal citation report for additional advice. What additional advice? Uh, here we have just information that these are most popular journals where research on this topic is being published. But then there might be a question, but which of these journals is most influential? Which of these journals can somehow guarantee the higher visibility? or simply which journal has the highest impact factor out of this. So we might help ourselves by looking at the subject areas. Why? Because these subject areas correspond to the same subject areas that are being used in journal citation reports. So knowing it's toxicology, We might want to go to this additional resources tab and click on journal citation reports. Here we are in journal citation reports and by default we will be 
researching through the science edition, which is okay for us because it's not psychology. And by default, we'll be searching through subject category. Later on, we can search, for example, for particular journals published by a given publisher. So very quickly, if you're searching for journals that a particular publisher has indexed in the science, you can find it here. That's quick. But let's go back to our search for category and search for toxicology and compare journals in that particular field. So we have toxicology. We click on submit and now we have a list of 83 journals in that particular area. Now they sorted alphabetically, but we want to see which journals have the highest impact factor out of this category. So here they are, <coughs> all the journals run by the impact factor value. And as you can see, there are other different metrics that are presented here. <coughs> what are they? Let's choose a journal. Anything you know? Okay. So I pick. Because now you see the idea of choosing a journal for a given discipline. So you can simply find and see which journal is the most influential in this particular uh, discipline and compare it with the most popular for such a topic as asthma. Uh, if you want, instead of going into any of the journals of toxicology, we can review a journal that uh, you're interested in and you're working with. And then we look 
how many times these publications were cited in 2010. So respectively, 174 publications from 2008 were cited 100 times in 2010. At the same time, 197 articles and reviews from 2009 were cited 90 times in 2010. So the impact factor calculation looked as the following. We take the number of citations <coughs> in the nominator and put the number of citable items in the nominator. And we get a calculation of the impact factor. Small difference is here in what is being cited. So as I mentioned, we are only calculating impact factor based on citations to articles and reviews, but the citation to those articles can appear in other publication types. So that's the way the impact factor is built. Five-year impact factor is calculated the same way, but in this particular case, this journal has not been indexed long enough, so it is not calculated yet. The journal started to be indexed in 2007, so we need two more years to, for the journal impact factor to be calculated. And here one note on journal impact factor. There are a number of journals that are being indexed for a year or two, and there are questions when the impact factor is going to be published. Impact factor for a journal that starts to be indexed now will be published in three years. So if a journal has been indexed since 2010, for example, so we have 2010, 2011, and for 2012, the impact factor will be calculated. Another metric, journal sales size, as you know, there is a self-citation phenomenon, which is nothing wrong and nothing bad by nature, but just here um, we calculate the level of self-citations in the journal. So self-citation for a journal is when an article or another item in a journal cites another publication in the same journal. So that's a self-citation on the level of a journal. What's journal immediacy index? Some people simply call it the speed of citing for a, uh, for a journal. It is calculated by looking at how many times for this particular year items in this particular year have been cited. So for 2010 we'll look at how many papers were, were published in 2010 and how many times they were already cited in 2010. So, speed of citation, I think, is a good way of looking at it. But please bear in mind that naturally, this immediacy index would be higher for those journals that appear more often. So, if it's a monthly edition, usually it would have higher immediacy index than, uh, for example, the quarterly or semi-annual edition. But that does not necessarily mean that such a journal would somehow guarantee higher number of citations for an article after two or three years. It's just the speed of citations. So bear that in mind. Uh, journal cited half-life. Well, here it's over 10, so well, maybe here we have different. I will explain why. 
y okay you will have a for that what uh, in about before we go into the estimation what sine theta half life and sine in half life is I just want to say that it has a value between 0 and 10 and if it's over 10 let me just show the matrix indicating it's over 10 so what is sine theta half life Sine theta half life is simply life expectancy of an article to be cited in simple terms. So if you think of how long your paper in a given journal has a chance to be cited, you would be looking at cited half life. And how do we calculate it? Here's the calculation for those who are interested. We will simply be looking at the age of articles that 50% of the authors have cited. That's why it's half life. So simply 50% of the citations to this particular journal are or an average average let's say age of an article that is cited in this journal is over 10 years. Which means that uh, there is a big spread for those who are cited in this article, meaning the articles here are valuable for a long time. And at the same time, if we look at citing half-life, citing half-life is somehow reversed to citing half-life. Not only by the ending, but because we are looking at what authors in this particular journal are cited. So you can say that 50% of the citations from this particular journal would refer to articles not older than 8.8 years. Yes. Well, what difference does it make, you would say? Well, by simply looking at this matrix, we can sometimes say what kind of articles are being published there. If we take, for example, genetics and citing half-life in genetics uh, journal is over 10 years old, what would it mean to us? If articles in genetics are citing 15 or 20 year old articles, well, it's not pretty much a journal that would publish an ongoing research. It would rather focus on what has been done in the past. At the same time, if you have a journal on geology or on mathematics with citing half-life of two or three years, then you might wonder what kind of publications or what kind of research has been done that does not go beyond the article that are three years old. So I leave you with these questions. And if you are interested in comparing in different way the journals, you can also use Eigenfactor. Eigenfactor looks at the journal and the citations to it in a slightly different way. First of all, it would not take into consideration for the calculation of uh, its factors. It would not take into consideration the self-citations within the journal assuming that they are not relevant. And second of all, would we'll use different weights for citations coming from different sources. So, putting in simple words, if a journal is cited 10 times by a journal A being it Nature, and 10 times by journal B being it a local journal, these 10 citations from nature have higher weight than these 10 citations from the other one. The same sometimes is applied for scientists, depending on where the citations are coming from, there is different way, uh, there's different way applied. For example, you are, if you're being a professor, you cited 
10 times by your colleagues, your fellow scholars from other universities or Nobel Prize winners, it would probably mean a different, different thing to you than being cited 10 times by your PhD students. Wouldn't it? So if anyone is interested to learn more about Eigen Factor, there's a very handy website, eigenfactor.org, where you can find more information. So eigenfactor.org, and here you find information about Eigen. Okay, let's continue with our journal. This journal is listed in two categories. In mechanics and physics tools and classes. Let's look at the mechanics category. We can look at all the journals in mechanics. 133 journals. Highest impact factor in that category being 10. And our journal's impact factor is 0.404. We can look for the aggregated category data for mechanics and see that the median impact factor is actually 1. So we should not compare our journal's impact factor, well, we might compare our journal's impact factor to the highest impact factor in the category, but probably it would not be a good idea. We should be rather comparing our journal impact factor to the median impact factor in the category or to aggregate impact factor in the category. So then we have a more accurate picture of where our journal stands in terms of citations and impact. We can also compare the citing half, citing half, like anyone wants to do that. But our journal is listed in two different categories. So let's, instead of checking every category separately, we can simply click on the button journal ranking. And we see that this particular journal, while it's listed in two categories, would have a different rank in those categories. We're still being in fourth quartile for both categories, but look at the number of journals in different categories, and look at the spread of impact factors for this particular categories as well. While for category A, mechanics, most of the impact factors would finish at 5.5 plus the one that has impact factor over 10. And the other, the other categories, physics, fluids, and plasma, would have a spread of impact factor from 7.7 .7 down to 0, so which is higher than the one for mechanics. So whenever you compare impact factor for journals, please make sure that you compare those impact factors First of all, for the same year, second, in the same category. Because impact factor for a journal might mean totally different thing, or the value of it might mean totally different thing, depending on the category. Okay? Any questions on journal impact factor?
that we create by simply clicking a link on the, the sort button and analyze result button and create citation report button and or link would appear here always if the number of results is 10,000 or less. So then we click on citation report and on the left hand side we have distribution of papers over time and on the right hand side we have distribution of citations to those papers. We have information on how many times those papers were cited, and so on and so forth. We have also information on how many times these papers were cited if some citations are not counted, but we'll get to it in a moment. But what I want to do now is click on any of these links here and see where these particular papers are cited. So we have 910 papers published on toxicology, on asthma in toxicology. And now we display the papers who are, which are citing those 910 papers. After we're done with the, this particular topic, we'll get to the author's part, which will be more fun for me. Okay, so we have over 6,000 results, and now we click on Analyze Results. Why would we want to analyze results for this particular topic? Well, just to see, for example, in what subject area it's usually applied. Well, here is quite straightforward that asthma in toxicology is again cited in toxicology. But you would not believe if you, for example, find the criminal journals and where they are cited. So if you wish, you can do this kind of homework yourself. We can also see what <coughs> what institutions are usually using or citing this kind of research. Or what countries are citing the research from here. And in what <coughs> journals usually the citations will appear. And now as you see, the distribution is more even than it was when we are looking at where those papers are being published. But that's it for analyzing a discipline. Maybe some of the things would be easier when we analyze papers of an author. And now it's the part when a name of an author for analysis should be said. And I did. Well, it's interesting. It's nothing to be, I would say, nothing, uh, we'll not do anything with the name, we'll just uh, look at, it. at the name as an example. We'll not be judging because. Citations are not for judging, citations are looking for connections uh, within the scientific world. Thank you. 
Well, let's, let's try with this. And the initial input is I. I. Okay. Sometimes uh, we're getting very political with uh, the names here. That's why I always now ask for someone to give an example. Because once I was not allowed to do such a presentation anymore after picking a wrong name. So, we have 10 papers of a given author. And for such a particular set, for any author, we can do the analysis or use the filters here to see uh, all the papers from a given perspective. So, I will click on Analyze Results and I will analyze the papers of this author by the author. So, as you can see, here you will see other authors that would appear with this author in the set of paper. Meaning basically, here we have an answer on who this particular author cooperates with, or co-authors, uh, what countries are the co-authors coming from, or for example, what institutions are the uh, authors coming from? Or in what languages are the papers being published? Or in what journals we can find these papers? So, <coughs> question. Okay. And if we don't know the author, we might see in what fields this particular author is being active. So let us go back to the list of the results. We have all the papers sorted by the times cited. So on the top we have the highly cited papers. And let's do the citation report for this particular author and we'll see on this graph the distribution of papers over time and on this graph distribution of citations over time. Here we have again number of papers, number of citations, number of me, number of citations without self-citations, average citation right hand and age index. We might again display the papers that are citing our author. <coughs> so here the self-citation is meant by citation to a paper of an author written. So it's a paper that cites the paper of this author. If an author cites another paper in a paper. Okay, so we have a number of results here, and again we can analyze the results to see, for example, who is, what authors are usually citing our author. And in this way, for example, we might find out who is interested in our research. Maybe it is our colleague from a different faculty, maybe it is someone from a different university, who we can work together on another, on another paper, maybe. What countries are the authors citing our article coming from? From what institutions, for example? And in what publications I can see my papers being cited? So on and so forth. There is also a different way of looking at authors' publications. Because here we have information that there are 11 papers of this particular author that have been cited in Web of Science. But once we have all the papers sorted by the time cited, we'll see that out of these 11 papers published, only 6 are being cited at least once. So what does it mean? It means that if we look 
from the cited references of <coughs> all the papers to see the 51 citations, but the 51 citations would be only <coughs> to five papers of this particular author. But we can do the following. We have a very useful feature here called Cited Reference Search. Cited Reference Search allows us to search for cited items. So what does it mean? Cited Reference Search would search for and return the information if whatever we search here was ever cited. So it can be anything or anyone. In this particular case, we're searching for author. So we are searching if what papers of this given author were cited. So as we saw from the previous results, there are only five papers of this author that have received citations. Correct? So we should be getting five papers, but we are getting 21 items. It means that not five items only are cited, but 21 items are being cited. So, where is the difference and where the difference comes from? Well, and as you can see, it's quite important because some papers by this author have received a very high number of citations. So where the difference is? Well, first of all, we can see those five papers that were cited before. As in the last column, we see the view record. And by viewing the record, we can go and see the papers of this author. For the rest of the papers, we do not have this thing. And that means that we will not see the details of this particular paper co-authored or authored by this particular person. But we still see how many times this paper is being cited. And we can also see that this particular paper published by this author in 1997 has been cited nine times. And we can see by clicking here and clicking on finish search, we will see in what papers this particular item was cited. We only see seven now out of nine, because I believe this is 1997 papers, so there are two citations that they built in 1997-1999. Now we have access uh, to all the data from the year 2000-2011, but I assume we'll be having also data from 1992 expanded until now, so we'll see most of the papers. But there will be also papers found here for different authors that are published not in index journals in other science. But you will also be able to see them here because if anything is cited by an article in web of science, it can be found. So we have here a number of publications in different scientific journals. But Who knows when was the first scientific journal published? Well, it was long before, for example, such an author has published his papers, right? Anyone heard of Newton? So when Newton published, there were no scientific journals. So, can we find citations to his papers? <coughs> yes, we can, but it's not that we can search the code. Oh. 
So maybe let's search for not Newton.
death is nothing to do with science, but more with fiction. Probably drama as well, I haven't done it. I haven't done it, to be honest. So, cited reference search would show us whether something is being cited or not. Just the last example how fiction Okay, and we have information that such work has been cited. And what what does it mean to us? Well, we have information that there are some papers that would relate uh, to this particular work for a given reason. And if we, for example, choose to see where this particular source is being cited, we will see that it's in quite appropriate place. Journal of Media and Culture Studies, uh, Narrative, uh, Journal of Popular Film and Television. So if you're searching for a specific topic, you might also sometimes want to use um, the cited reference search. And here it would be used more. The more your searches go towards social science or arts and humanities. But I'll explain that in a moment. And one more comment. Here you, you see also number of citations. How many times different papers have been cited here as well. But I would just warn you not to use this for the metrics. Because as you can see, it can be anything. It can be a movie, it can be a speech, it can be a newspaper article. And if you want, if you then take these numbers and compare them with the numbers in citation report, it wouldn't make sense because these are different sources. That's why Web of Science indexes only 11,000 journals because these journals have passed uh, selection procedures and need certain, yes, high, but meet a certain criteria. Then what is being cited is not verified. And in many cases, this is not something that we would call scientific source. So citations coming from it cannot be compared to the citation to scientific journals in web of science. It is a great tool, yes, cited reference search, very informative to see, for example, in what other journals an author is publishing, in other journals, usually in our here local perspective, are the local journals or the journals uh, before 1990. It's all, it all can be found here, but it would rather serve an um, information purpose rather than, uh, I would say, analysis <coughs> and comparison. So just bear that in mind. Let us go back to <coughs> results. Okay, and I see that one thing is missing here and we'll do it probably no time. There should, and I know probably where your question is coming from. All the, all the papers that you see here should have link to full text button. Because I would say now around 10% of all the journals are open access, so you will have access automatically to them. Plus, you also have access to the you also have access to the university to number of scientific journals from various different publishers. And when we click on when or when we click on the link while it's here, it will take you directly to the full text version of this article. So we'll remember to link that here.
But let us go to the view of a single record. Remember we searched for an author, so this author is listed here and highlighted. This particular paper is being cited 23 times. And at the same time, this particular paper cites 32 other papers. So let's see what other papers this particular paper is citing. So these are the references of this particular article. So we can see what sources this author has used for this paper. And there are also some older papers that are being cited because we do not have access to uh, data in, in the 60s. We will only see the title, the first author, and how many times this particular paper is being referred to or cited. Or we will see information also from translators, probably a paper from proceeding. No, oh, that's, that's something we only have access to. And as you can see, we have access to most of the cited references in this article. I mean, we have access to the full record view of those papers, except maybe for one or two items. Sometimes when you have papers, you will have cited references <coughs> coming not from Web of Science, but other sources like local journals or books are being cited. And that would naturally grow bigger in a ratio the more the papers go towards arts and humanities. So usually papers from natural sciences, hard sciences, would cite mostly papers from within the web of science. And if we look at social sciences and then arts and humanities, the number of papers that are being cited uh, from web of science would would diminish and more relevant would be the sources that are outside of the science. For example, the movies before mentioned, maybe books or some other uh, installations maybe. So just bear that in mind. And what can we do and how citations can help us search for more information here? Well, we have information on our paper. We have information that there are 32 sources that author has used to write this paper. We can also find other publications that would share these 32 sources. So we are looking at what are the other papers that would refer to the same source material. Well, here the search probably gives us no results because the one that shows most, most of the papers is only one. Only one paper is being shared in the source material, so it does not help us in this case. But maybe let's choose another paper. Here we have 39 references and we search for related records. And again, the same situation. So, in this case, it wasn't very helpful. But usually when you have quite large number of references, then you might find papers that are using quite a common number of papers from the same discipline. And it's usually like this, that there are a few papers within every area that are highly cited and probably they would appear in almost every paper in that particular research area. Okay, we're still in the record view. Here also, in the record view, you will have the, the button as a link to full text. 
In the record view, you have the basic information about the particular publication with an abstract type of publication, auto keyword, and also keyword plus. Uh, what are keyword plus? Keyword plus are additional keywords that are added to the records based on the algorithm that was created by Eugene Garfield back in the 50s. So if anyone is interested uh, into how this algorithm works, I would recommend going to uh, Eugene Garfield home website. It has the paper published on Keywords Plus. Or just let me know and I will send you the, the article or link to it uh, whenever possible. Every paper would have also information on the affiliation of the authors. And starting in 2008, we started to link authors with affiliation. This paper is from the year 2000, when it has not happened yet. Therefore, here it might be confusing which author belong to what institution. But newer papers already have that. If you see here, there's an author index 1, 2, 3, and then corresponding affiliations appear here, so now we know who belongs where. Also, when a particular paper is published in a journal that already has impact factor, you will see a link to the impact factor on this blue field to the right. And when you click on it, you will see this page of journal citation reports, which can be accessed to the main page of a journal. So if we on this page again click return to the journal, we get to the main page where all the statistics for the journal is. And this is the link that we use. So impact factor trend will simply show us the impact factor value from the last five years. You might come across a record that would contain, I don't know, a name that is misspelled or the affiliation has been wrongly taken or um, attached to a wrong person. Then there is this thing, suggest a correction. If you click on it, then you'll be forwarded to a formula where you can basically suggest correction and uh, our team would look at the record and go back to the original article to correct any errors. Any questions so far? Actually, you passed it very briefly about uh, the inclusion of the papers in the, the index, the top subordinate index, and I'm just wondering, uh, how, how, would you explain in more detail how is the journal included in our index? Mm -hmm. Well, there are very high practice types and so on, but would you explain? Okay. So, we go back to Master Journalist <laughs> website. And here, in this section, we have the journal selection process explained. So I will not go into detail to uh, explain every single item, but I will say here is the information how we evaluate journal, what we demand from the journal to have to meet the international say, uh, editing standards, and how the process works. So just a brief summary of what are the main, I would say, things that we search for the journal is, of course, peer review. That's number one. And another number one is English version of 
the titles and the abstract and the keywords. Plus, of course, um, if it is a journal printed not in a Latin alphabet, then everything, all the author names should also be written in a Latin alphabet. We do not use uh, transcriptions, we do not use transliterations, we are, are asking the publisher to provide us with the Latin version of the names. Just to, uh, just not to confuse anyone with this or the other method that we would be using. Uh, when it comes to the whole process, it is, I would say, very easy. You simply send a journal to us if it's printed. <coughs> You submit uh, one issue of a journal and then two following issues when they appear and you send them all to our processing department in the USA. And after the third issue is delivered to our office, the whole selection procedures start. When you have a journal published in a digital format, just follow the links and registration process here. So it's also the same place. And the same applies for conference proceedings and book citation index now. So if you publish a scientific book series or books or you want to include conference proceedings, in uh, context between citation indexes. There are also uh, selection procedures for that and you can also find more information on work info on the products and tools there will be information about different, uh, different sources and different criteria So also this website can search, can, uh, can serve as an information source. Like for example here is conference proceedings selection process, which is slightly different from the selection process from, uh, of journals, because the criteria are quite different because of the nature of conference proceedings. And while we talked about conference proceedings, uh, I just want to go back to our web of science, the first thing, and look at the citation uh, indexes that are part of web of science. We talked about journal citation reports and about impact factors, and at this moment I would like to point out that journal citation reports are made from the journals and here goes one condition that are at least indexed for three years in web of science. So that was one condition. And the second condition is that the journal is indexed in one of these first two indexes. So it has to be journal from science citation index or social sciences citation index. If this is a journal from Arts and Community Citation Index, then the journal impact factor would not be calculated. There is a simple reason. There is not enough citations to the journals in these disciplines. For the statistical information, which impact factor is, to be relevant. And we've been asked also many times if conference proceedings materials would have impact factor. The answer is no. For the simple reason, because of the nature of conference proceedings, it is not a perpetual. Uh, it is not a perpetual publication as a journal for the impact factor to be uh, to be calculated. So now uh, 
you know that impact factor could only be calculated for these two disciplines for, and for the journals in these two uh, areas. Okay. So now we, we are still uh, working on asthma. We found few interesting articles and now we would like to use these particular articles in our papers. Uh, we would like to cite them. So we choose three of them. And I'm already signed in. So I click on EndNote Web. And what does it do? At this moment I am adding these three checked by me articles to my personal library in EndNote Web. So once I'm signed in and I have a particular record already in my personal library in EndNote Web, I will get the information on the screen that is already there and I don't need to add it again. How do I work with my library? in EndNote Web. Whenever I'm done with searching for articles and I'm more preparing to uh, work on a paper, I would simply click on end my EndNote Web link here or while at home I would simply type www.myendnotewebweb.com and use the same email and password as well as I used for creating the account for learning to Web Knowledge. Then I have a number of papers, uh, here a number of publications, and I can edit the references or, and organize them into different folders, maybe for different uh, papers I'm working on, or maybe for different themes I'm interested in, or I might add also another references by searching different databases that are available online here, like the Library of Congress, like Medline, and so on and so forth. We'll just have to add some more, these are my favorite. Or I can add some new references that are not available elsewhere in electronic version. For example, I um, don't know, uh, a PhD thesis or a master's thesis, so I just choose the format of this publication, maybe a book or anything, or maybe just an excerpt <coughs> from an uh, encyclopedia, and then I create a new reference that I can use later. Or I can import references from any other databases. I'll just click on the help file to show you what different databases are available and are working perfectly with EndNote Web. Most of you at least know EBSCO. And EBSCO, EBSCO host has all the button to direct export to EndNote Web. So when using other databases like C SCSA, Dialog uh, or Ovid, you will always be able to, to save the data in a bibliographic format and then import them to your library and notepad to keep them all in one place. You can manage your groups. You can let others to see your folders. So you can share it with, for example, your students or you can share it with your colleagues so your students will only be able to read what you have stored and prepare for a course or but with your colleagues you might give them write and delete rights just to work on the references used for the paper but most important is how you format the references Simply by choosing references and the folder, you'll be able to format the references in 
going to be transformers. So in this particular case, uh, this is the format I've chosen right now, and I can now copy and paste it in another program. But it's not that uh, outside. It doesn't show all the all the possibilities of unknown web. I'm just wondering whether we have Microsoft Office here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, all the tools. So I hope that I'll know the admin right. We can install site while you are plugging for Windows or what? Uh, very soon we'll have uh, also a plugin for uh, Open Office. But how the plugin helps us in working with Animal Touch? It simply does two things. Connects us directly with the library of EndNote Web, so we don't have to go to the website to log in and search and organize uh, the and organize the references. So the plugin in Word would allow us not only to format the references, but also would format all the body of the document of the Word paper. So then we will not have to remember or know that for a specific journal or a publisher, we, use, we put the references in upper index or in normal brackets or in square brackets or probably the button is okay. No. So then all the formatting is been done throughout the whole document, not just the references at the bottom.
No standard questions. <laughs> Okay, so now uh, we just need to find something inside. So I'm searching for a keyword in my in the records I always store in my in my library and not web, and then I keep on writing whenever I have to find something. and so on and so forth. But unfortunately, I've installed the one style. So I'll have to go home. But whenever you want to change a style to a different style, and please do it, do it yourself when you log into EndNote, then you will have over 2,000 now over 3,500 different styles for different publishers and different journals. And whenever you change the different style, you will see that the format of the document is changing. Not only the references here are changing, but also the way that they are referred to in the text is changing. So here we have regular brackets and the publication date. And sometimes it's just a number index, sometimes it's just a number of the reference in square brackets, and so on and so forth. So this is how EndNote Web would help you in writing an actual paper. What else can we do with the data? Well, sometimes, let's go to our search history, we are working on a search string for a given research field for some time, and or we create different search strings because we are interested in different topics. And we want to save the results of our work, we want to save the result of our searches, so simply by going to the search history, we we'll have a list of our past searches. And let us assume that we are interested only in a couple of them, so I will delete the rest of the searches. So I'm just interested in keeping these searches and I simply click on save history. <coughs> and I can put a name to it and a description. And usually researchers or librarians are very busy people, so they don't have time to simply go to tens of different databases and search for information that something has been published on an interesting topic. So simply, once we have a search here to history saved, we can click this, uh, check this little box here, and when we choose weekly or monthly, we would get an email with information what new has been published meeting the criteria. So if you are interested in asthma, from this example, in toxicology, whenever something on this subject has been published, we will get information on what is published in this subject sent to our email by this, by this uh, simple form. And we always can see what safe searches we have by simply clicking the top of the screen, my search searches, 
and we can see under when we will be receiving the information about the results. We can change the settings or simply rerun the search again. Similarly, we might be interested to hear whether a particular paper has been cited. So if I'm interested to be notified that this particular paper has been cited and I want to know when and by whom, I would simply click on this Create Citation button, the Create Citation alert, sorry, and any time someone cites this particular paper by email, I'll get a notification of what paper is referencing this particular paper in it. And again, in my citation alert section, I would have a list of all the citation alerts I have done. If I have my personal website, I can use the RSS feed to push the information to the website. Similarly, with my site searches, if you search here, for example, for papers on a given topic, uh, papers from a given faculty, you can write the whole formula and then put an XML feed on the website so anytime a new paper would appear written by anyone from the staff of the faculty, then the information about this paper would appear on the website. Any questions to that? Um, can I just ask about the endnote service? Sure. Um, is it free service? Yes. Well, it's not free. Someone's paid. Okay. No, it, it, yes, it comes. It comes with the subscription. It's part of the subscription, and no one, no one actually is asked to, to pay that. Okay. So what happens? I'm like I'm not trying to be pessimistic, but. What happens if we do not subscribe to web of knowledge anymore? Sure. Do we lose all the information on the endnote? Theoretically, uh, you always have access to it uh, because also to maintain access to the archives in the moment you start subscription, in order to have access to the past years that you already subscribed to and you have full right, you need to make, you need to pay a maintenance fee to access to the server. And usually this maintenance fee is uh, calculated in the way that uh, includes access to another web. So in a pessimistic scenario, uh, you do not subscribe anymore, you do not pay the maintenance fee, then you keep access to Endnote Web for about 12 months. So it's the time to decide whether you want to keep it, you want to move it, or the subscription, the exclusive subscription is uh, really one or the other. I, I just want to add that there are several components for the web of knowledge and the cheapest one journal citation index is about four thousand dollars per, mm -hmm. per, per, year. per year so if we in the pessimistic scenario can't pay for the whole web of uh, science we can have this one component which also would include the web of uh, and no, am I correct? Yes, uh, and not web comes with subscription to any of the components on Web of Knowledge. So Web of Knowledge is the platform, so in order for the institution to access it, it has to have a database available. Or, if it is not ongoing subscription and has rights to the archives, then still to access archives needs to have the platform to access, access the archives, Therefore, if not subscribing anything, at least it would be the maintenance fee. 
but the maintenance fee is uh, actually either equal or even higher than the subscription to the, I would say, cheapest component. Therefore, by having something, you still, you still maintain your access to the different, uh, to different features. And as you said, envelope is for free, therefore it's limited. It is limited on two fields, uh, as compared to the full version of envelope, to the desktop version. First of all is the number of records. You can store up to 10,000 records. <coughs> so if you need more to store more records, well, you can also uh, you can also create another account and store more records on the other account, which is also for free. But if you store more than 10,000 records, it means that probably Endnote Web is not a product that meets your needs. And you should search for another tool that would better address what you want to do, whether you're trying to build a small, I don't know, a database, or you're simply processing more records, then, for example, EndNote Desktop would be a more uh, sophisticated product that would maintain such a such large number of records. Other limitation, if you can call limitation, is simply uh, just the way that EndNote Web works, is that you cannot store PDF documents there. So if you have, uh, if you downloaded a full text PDF, uh, then it will not be stored in EndNote Web. So that's uh, that's uh, the limitation. Other than that, it's. Uh, I would say it is fully functional with anything uh, else and it does what it's supposed to do. Well, in any case, it's, well, it's always nice to have everything in one place, I, I can understand that, but then uh, I would say it comes at a price. Any other questions? May I ask a bit more general question? Sure. The Thomson Reuters index thing was like a very um, impressive project, let's say. Well, could you say like the mission or the, the future strategy or the politics, how it's developed or how it's gonna develop and something like this? Because uh, it's, quite, it's quite an impressive thing. Okay. Well, uh, generally, uh, let me how it all started. It started in the 50s uh, when uh, Dr. Garfield started to develop an index that would somehow mirror the index of um, the court cases. Uh, in the US, as you know, a case can be one in bringing the uh, example of something similar that has happened in the past. So the idea here was to link all the documents that have been cited to create like the core for the different sciences in different fields. And this is how Science Citation Index was developed to basically track the origins of uh, different discoveries. Then uh, the Eugene's, Eugene and his team have discovered that these relations do not only exist within one specific field, but there are interactions between different disciplines. Therefore, after some time, there was social sciences citation index added to see how the social, how the science, how the health sciences, natural sciences, influence the other sciences. And then uh, also arts and humanities citation index has been added. Uh, in the 90s, um, there was another index conference or ISI proceedings at the time, a database of conference proceedings material. But since more it became more and more popular and more important scientifically to 
publish and present papers at conferences, then we also discover that they are cited more. And the criteria for publishing and presenting a paper at conferences have risen and in many cases met the standards of peer review of journals, of scientific journals. Therefore, a decision was made that we should also track and index the uh, conference materials. And now we have a database, a separate database, uh, that's called Conference Proceeding Citation uh, Conference Proceeding Citation Index. That, I would say, is an add-on website. Well, we've been talking about books, and there was a discussion how much new scientific material is added to a discipline by books. And this year we are also launching book citation index, but again, uh, it is very important to remember that there are different behaviors and patterns in different disciplines. Therefore, if you look at Web of Science and the composition of journals from various different uh, fields, you notice that vast majority of journals in Web of Science comes from science uh, and related field. There are, let's say, 70% of journals from the science section, 20% from social sciences, and around 10-15% from arts and humanities section. And then this and this, I would say, relation is being maintained throughout the years. And this actually reflects the number of publications that appear in journals for various different disciplines. So if you assume that for hard sciences, uh, natural sciences, there's between 85 and 99 percent of all the new scientific information being published through journals, then you will realize why 70% of the journals in Web of Science are from that are from those disciplines. Again, if you look at how much material, how much new material is published in journals in social sciences, then you would understand again why only or up to 30% of the journals are from social sciences. And again, arts and humanities. Here probably sometimes not even 50% of the new discoveries are communicated through journals. Therefore journals from arts and humanities, you would say, are not the big section of web of science. Because, again, also for us and humanities, citation is a different method of communication. Citation in us and humanities, many times it would not mean roots of a discovery, it would rather mean something like uh, additional reading. So not something I'm referring to, something I would like you to look at. So the nature of citation is also a bit different. That's why such a composition maintains. And because this relation is being carried on for a number of years, also this balance in web of science is being maintained. So we will never add hundred more journals from arts and humanities before we add, let's say, one thousand journals from sciences. There are databases, uh, new databases that, that are that still developing, and this balance is being distorted uh, throughout years. One year, there is 25 percent of the journals are from engineering. Another year, instead of five, 25 percent of journals come from humanities. It is interesting. It is a nice source of information, but again, if you are doing any kind of analysis or you want to check and search for trends, then this is not a relevant source of information because the information is simply not accurate. So we maintain web of science as the core of the citation universe, but we are building additional sections to show where the discoveries are coming. 
And again, we look at the disciplines where the information is coming from. That's why, for example, book citation index in 60% uh, would have books from arts and uh, from social sciences and humanities, and only 40% of the composition of book citation index would be books from uh, natural sciences. Now, also, we are planning in the near future to add information about patents into the universe of web of science. Because now we have a database that shows what articles have been cited by patents, what articles have been cited by patents examiner. But we don't have information now linked in the other side what patents have been cited by articles. Because when a patent is cited by an article, it's more of a showing the source. Well, we can find it inside the preference search, of course, but it would not work in the way it is in normal science. Then we choose a patent and then we simply click and see what patents are citing this patent. We can only see what articles the patent cites. Just to explain that better, I'll show you uh, one feature of Web of Knowledge that basically summarizes the idea of uh, tracking the, dis the discoveries by citations. So why we use citation? Why citations are something unique in while searching for information? We have two types of citations. Formal citations, when for example our paper is being cited. We have backward citations, which in other case are the references or cited references, or simply this is what we cite. We can have an overview and we will on our map on what we cite and who cites us. And again, we choose generations. We can see up to two or more generations of, for example, backward citations or forward citations of two generations. So we would see, as we have this uh, example before, of our paper being cited by a Nobel Prize winner and our PhD students. So probably the papers who have cited us, written by PhD students, would not have high citations afterwards because they are not recognized as the recognized authors whose papers again would have would be cited. And citations of the papers that are citing us, this is the second generation of citations. So let's look, for example, in the backward citations. Um, this is our paper here in the center, and we are looking on, well, uh, here graphically on what we cited. And this was the first generation, and the second generation, we want to see what has been cited by those that we cited. So we create the map of these citations and in the center there will be the paper that we analyze and we are looking again at the papers that this paper cites and we are also looking at what papers this paper's inside cite. I hope that uh, you still can follow. Doing anything different from what we've been doing so far. 
This is basically just tracking the citations in a different way, in a more visual way. So now we have the paper, our original paper, has cited 32 other papers, of which, for example, one being a paper by this Italian photos, who again cited a set of different authors, of which one of them is this particular author, who again cites other papers, and particularly this paper, who again cites other papers, and so on so forth, we can track the citations in the past. Well, it's up to us to decide how relevant it is, because we might find a link from a citation to a paper in 2010 to Bible uh, at the end. But it's not the way we should be looking at it. Well, of course, it's nice to find a connection, but still, this can show us what are the trends in science. Let's maybe not go that deep, but let's just try to analyze it. You remember we were analyzing uh, the papers by who is being cited, what countries, what institutions are the authors coming from. We can do exactly the same thing here. Let's do the countries. Uh, we just set the different colors of different countries and we just display the text of different countries. And say so here, paper by Latvian authors have been cited by Australian, Brazilian, Canadian, English author, or sorry, the other way, cited papers authored by the English men, Italians, Netherlands, and American and other countries as well. So we see that this shows how international the science becomes. We can also display instead of countries, we can display uh, institutions. So we are just looking at the same information we did in the past, but in another way, to find new links, to track how the discipline has been changing, or maybe uh, to find information that would be relevant for our discoveries. So as you see, we do not focus too much on the analytical and statistical part of the citations. Because, yes, it is relevant at some point, but web of science is mainly the source of information for research, not for evaluation. Evaluation is only a part, or can become a part, but web of science is mainly a source for information while you are doing research. What uh, others are publishing, what others are using for the research, what can I use for the research, what would be the good, good way to follow some others. We can talk about evaluation at some other uh, occasion. But now I want to ask you whether you have some questions. Yes. Uh, when uh, there was bad talks about uh, renewing uh, subscription for university, it was talks also of, of course, uh, years uh, 90s uh, that the uh, academic library had on c CDs. Yeah. But currently it's uh, not available yet. It's not available when I believe that in Paris very soon. Uh, yes, uh, we have actually discussed this, uh, this issue about archives, we had uh, the academic library and we had reached a certain agreement and as soon as we will take care of the bill for this year, uh, it might be in a month's time they will open up because we will pay for, for the 
electronic version in the next three years, so it will be available. Yes, yeah, she has a lot of people who are in the next three years. She has a lot of people who are in the next three years. She has a lot of people who are in the next three years. So the aim is that uh, by the end of uh, October we will have access to uh, 1992 data. Of a really great importance 
of the science. But there was no citation coming both ways, and this part was somehow forgotten because there was no exchange of information going on on the journal level or between the scientists. There was no access <coughs> to this information. And the same is with nowadays with the databases. If we have a database that Present, that is presenting or enhancing searching through citations, how is this helping me to have another 11,000 journals that are not cited at all? Well, to be honest, the truth is, even in web of science, 20% of the index journals would gather 80% of all the citations. And even for journals with high impact factor for their particular disciplines, also this Pareto rule apply. 20% of the articles in that journal would gather 80% of, of uh, the citations. So there is no sense in adding more not cited items because we do not only create another value, we are diminishing value of what is already available. Imagine we have 10 articles published, of which 5 are cited, and every of these 5 articles is cited 10 times. So we have 50 citations, and we have 10 our papers. The average citation rate is five citations per paper. Imagine instead of these 10 papers, we have 100 papers, and still only five of them are cited. So now we have citation, average citation rate of 50 over 100, which means that on average our paper is cited half time. So what kind of information is that? We can publish, and on other uh, terms, we can publish an article every day. Some say a day without an uh, article published is a lost day. But what value added is in this article, if it's written every day, is it a thorough research and how much does it add to a discipline? So then we're talking about separating quality material from anything else. Because there are too many American journals. 
Uh, it, well, um, before we go into the numbers, I'll tell you, uh, well, I would say, I say yes, it is true, uh, but let's look at why. How many papers or how much simply is spent on the research in different areas in the US as compared to any other region in the world? It's very easy. Uh, as many money you invest in, in, in science, as many publications you get back. Exactly. Well, is it? Well, we have, we have other tools uh, that track, for example, cost of producing one paper in different countries, and it very well reflects uh, the situation in publishing. Again, um, talking that if the data, if, for example, there is a publisher who has a database saying that it's not American or centric, then again it does not present the true picture. Uh, many would uh, compare one of science with Scopus, for example, there is such a database, saying that Scopus is less Anglo or Americano centric. Well, this is uh, totally not true. And it's also not true that uh, Web of Science is an American database because uh, less than 50% of, of all the journals come from, uh, come from US. Uh, another, uh, another thing is that Web of Science does not maybe have that many regional journal index from different countries like Latvia, like Estonia, as there are in other databases. Well, uh, so to those I propose an exercise to check how many publications of national authors appear in national journals as compared to the foreign journals. And we will get a picture that uh, well, provides us answer to anything. And again, it's not about the quantity when you want to check the uh, publication patterns. There are different ways to track publication uh, production, if I can say that, but there are different tools to check the impact of this publication. There are different databases. There is Google Scholar, there is Publish or Perish, where you can check information on the citation. These are great sources. Yes, it is nice to see that a website has cited my presentation that I put on my personal website. It is nice, but can this be compared to a citation of a renowned professor by another professor? Well, I don't think so. Uh, that's why these sources are great for discovering but are totally useless for analysis and monitoring purposes, and especially for evaluation. So we have to separate getting the information and assessing the results. Of course, we should take into consideration various differences between, uh, between disciplines and funding, but that is not to the database, that is to the policy makers who decides on that. And accessibility of, to, of information. We're talking open access, everyone's talking open access. We are pro open access. We are doing our own studies showing that open access does not mean for a journal having low impact articles. It is in the hands of publishers how they do maintain their journal and what's the policy of the journal and what's the business model. We, I would say that we observe that journals who enter the open access area, that they receive higher rates of citations because they are available to a wider audience. And, well, coming back to this uh, idea of open access, open access is to full text. Full stop. Tools like Web of Science would not be, uh, I would say, for free in open access format, 
because it is simply, first of all, not the idea of open access, but uh, these are the tools for other purposes. These are the tools that help to search through the vast information that is available and pick only those who is, well, in which is relevant. So that's, uh, that's the idea. So there might be search engines that would do similar work, but again, it would be impossible to replicate anything like, like web of science.